Hello, and welcome to Feedback Panda's very important panda interview series. My name is Danielle, and I am the creator of Feedback Panda. VI Panda is a weekly event where we talk with one special teacher to hear about their journey. Our VI Panda this week is teacher Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Hello, Danielle. How are you? I am well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks so much for being our VI Panda. I am excited to be here. Thank you for asking me. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, Sandra, can you tell us about yourself? Well, um, like a lot of other online teachers out there, I am just a super busy person. Uh, my husband and I have three children um, and we happen to homeschool them and they are now in middle and high school. So um, we are even busier, if possible, than we were when they were younger. Um, plus, I teach online six days a week, and I have a small remote services business that I run during the, the daytime in America. Um, and we also study Taekwondo. Our entire family studies Taekwondo. We have all, um, in the last few months, earned our black belts and are really excited about continuing on our journey studying this martial art. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. And what an accomplishment to have as a family. That's amazing. Um, okay, so you homeschool. Tell me more about your teaching journey. Well, I actually started teaching um, quite a while ago, uh, 30 years ago, actually in a few months. I graduated um, on a Friday in 1989, and I was in a classroom on Monday morning. There was just such a high demand at that point for teachers uh, in my field. And I taught in um, schools uh, for over 10 years. Um, most of the time, I was the music specialist, but I also spent a significant portion of that time as the instructional technology manager in the schools that I worked in. And that gave me a really kind of interesting perspective I never went looking for because I was always teaching more than one grade. And I was always having to take into account different curriculum um, issues and different learning benchmarks um, all the time, especially when it came to writing grants for funding um, technology for education. I really had to show how everything was integrated. So, um, so it was, it was a really interesting, a really stimulating experience for me. I did spend a couple years uh, teaching um, at a university as an adjunct, working with pre-service teachers. And I also spent about a year and a half uh, with a regional nonprofit working in their education department. But in the end, I came back to the classroom because that was what I loved. Not long after my husband and I started a family, we discovered that we were going to spend quite a bit of time moving around the country following his, his job or following his career. Um, there was a lot of travel and while our children were still quite small, we realized that there was going to be a conflict with the traditional school year and with attending schools if we were going to be spending any significant time together as a family. So we started doing some research and um, I, what I tell people is homeschooling is not something that I ever thought that I would be doing, but it's worked out really well for our family. Um, I think, you know, depending on your circumstances, it can be a great fit. And I'm kind of impressed uh, with my own boys, my boys who are, I have one in high school and one who is entering high school. And now that we're a little settled for a few years, um, you know, I ask them, are you, do, would you like to go to, to a public school? And they kind of have their education planned and they know what they want to do. And they decided that they wanted to continue on this path. So um, I think it's worked out really well for them so far. And oh. that, is, that is how I came to where I am now. Oh, that's wonderful. What a great story. Um, I couldn't help but picking up that you were a music teacher as well. I, I was a music teacher, yes. <laughs> very close to my heart. I also studied music. Oh, okay. <laughs> did, you, did you study music in the university? 
I studied music. Um, I have a Bachelor of Music from Westminster Choir College. And I actually have my master's is in education, but I did all of my work at the time studying um, music education, particularly focusing in on early childhood development and also not, not early childhood necessarily, but in the uh, implementation of technology in education. Okay, so to me, I feel like um, music and early childhood edu education um, really lends itself to online teaching and it sounds like you have the technological background as well. So, right, like, and there's also yeah. a great deal of research that's been done on the parallels between uh, musical development in early childhood and language acquisition. Mm -hmm. And that was something that really just sucked my inner geek in when I started teaching online, teaching ESL, because I could see the children achieving tasks or assimilating information about language that I had previously watched them go through the same steps musically. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then what led you to online teaching? Well, um, as our as we were bouncing around the country, <laughs> whether we were just traveling temporarily or moving, mm -hmm. um, I had tried a couple of different things um, to, to do a little work, especially as our children got bigger and didn't need my direct attention quite so much. And I had realized that um, I was going to need to work online, <laughs> that, that just having some place that, uh, that was tethered uh, geographically wasn't going to work for our family, not for, not for a while. And I had been doing the remote services work that I do during the day. And a friend of mine on Facebook posted a link. She had become a VIP kid teacher. And that was actually in January of 2017. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, that sounds too good to be true because I had always missed working with children and teaching them. And, and homeschooling is great, but it's a little bit different. They're your own children and, and it's, not quite, it's not quite the same uh, relationship because you're working, you know, you're still the mom. And um, so I, I figured it sounded too good to be true, but I had nothing to lose but my email address, right? <laughs> so I went and I, um, I signed up and I started the application process. And then um, that whole year turned out to be uh, really chaotic for our family. Um, just, we moved twice. Um, one of our children was in the hospital three times. Um, we had a rental property that our tenants had done an enormous amount of damage to. And my husband's company that he worked for folded. <laughs> So it was, we began to call it, we were just, what you could do, you couldn't do anything but laugh. We called it the year of many things. And so I was not thinking about teaching online. I was just trying, I was working during the day. I was trying to keep up with my children. I was keeping our family moving forward. And around October, VIP Kid reached out to me and said, uh, why don't you finish your application process? And things had settled down some. And I thought, okay, because if this is what they're putting it across to be, this could be a great option for our family. And everything just, it was like dominoes falling down from there. Um, at the time, we were actually living in that, that property that had been damaged so badly. Um, we, we went out there with folding chairs and air mattresses and we did most of the remodeling ourselves. And so I started teaching online in a corner of an empty dining room because I was in the corner and you couldn't see that we were in an empty house. And it's really been great. It, it took us through that time and um, I haven't looked back since. Wow, that's an incredible, incredible year. The year of many things, I, I think that's, um such a telling label like it's from what you just said it sounds like you just kept going forward kept moving forward and then um, such wonderful timing for online teaching to come into your life 
Um, it was, it was, it was such a blessing because it was helpful and it was so much fun. Yeah. It really was. I could see my husband would look at me because like, you're, you're having fun. You know, he kind of thought <laughs> I was taking one for the team, right? <laughs> Cause I was going to be up working at 5 AM, but it was just fun. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm thinking about you were at that time adjusting to so many things. How was it for you then adjusting to this online classroom? Well, it actually, um, that actually part was pretty smooth because, because of my experience, both teaching in regular schools and homeschooling, um, I was really comfortable with the technology. That didn't take me long to adjust at all. Um, and I, I think probably my first thing I really spent money on for teaching is I, I bought a color printer because I thought, yeah. I'm going to be, I'm going to be the queen of 2D props, you know? Yes. And, and the laminator and, was a laminator. Oh, I already had a laminator. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, which sounds a little crazy. I had a laminator, but not a 3D or not a, I'm sorry, color printer. Mm -hmm. So um, I, that part was pretty smooth. What I hadn't thought about, I thought about outages of internet because that particular property it's just kind of nestled in a way that every time they have a storm, they're, um, they tend to lose the, the electricity and or the internet. Okay. So I made sure I had a hotspot. And then about five months after, we start, after I started teaching, we moved into this home, which is our permanent home. And we did not know when we bought this home. It's in a beautiful area in the woods. We're right on the the edge of some undeveloped property, but apparently in this neighborhood, you lose the electricity often. And um, so I mentioned it to some neighbors and they're like, oh yeah, everybody's got a generator. <laughs> and oh. so we, the first time this happened, there was a storm as I ended up um, teaching on my porch because thankfully the sun had come up enough, there was enough light and I had my phone as a hotspot. Right. And just running off battery power. But since then, we've got our little system. And thank goodness my husband has my back because as soon as he knows, he jumps up and we run an inverter out to our truck. <laughs> and I can just work from my regular equipment. Um, okay. Yeah, and, it's really awesome. <laughs> and does that work for like the, the internet connection as well? Um, our internet, as long as our internet has power, we have internet, we, our modem needs power because okay. somehow, I don't know how the internet company does it, but the inter, uh, they, like, I guess the power is, is on their end for the internet, um, okay. but we have to power the modem. Right. So basically we get, you know, we're using our truck as a giant generator is what yeah. we're doing. And we plug in, um, we plug in a big extension cord and just make sure that the modem and my computer and my lighting is plugged into it and mm -hmm. we're good to go. Thankfully, that doesn't happen often, but I would say we've lived here almost a year and uh, we've probably had to do it five or six times. Five or six times. Surprise! Wow. Oh my gosh. And is it like, um, I know in Canada where, where I'm from, in small town, Ontario, we get power outages for like um, thunder and lightning storms wind storms and then also snow of course so i know what it's like but also I, I think about it like the phone line would always be available so i guess it's kind of like the internet right i think it must be something similar yeah. yes mm -hmm. and i did a little inquiring when i realized that this was an issue here and it turns out it goes right back to the thing one of the things that attracted us to this home is it's it's close by all of this undeveloped property with all of these wonderful, this wonderful forest on it. And mm -hmm. of course there are storms and trees fall and knock down lines. And that's that I, that's, we've learned that's part of the price of living yeah. in this beautiful little spot. You can take. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, I mean, if you don't have classes, sometimes it can be nice to have a little retreat of no power and just candlelight, but not when you're relying on it. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so aside from a generator, have you found anything else particularly helpful um, 
when you became a new teacher or just through through the months um, that you've been online teaching? I think the online community in general is amazing with with teaching ESL online. Um, in I've I've taught for several different companies, and they all have their own little Facebook groups. Yeah. Um, but they also often have little groups where they have message boards elsewhere. And by and large, I found that people, it doesn't matter where they're from. It doesn't matter where they're living now. They're super generous and really supportive. Yeah, and that's, I think that's probably been the most helpful thing for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you said you teach for multiple companies. What companies do you teach for? Well, currently I teach for VIP Kid and GoGo -Go Kid. Um, I taught exclusively for VIP Kid. Well, at first, because I didn't even know there were other ESL companies. This was really a brand new idea to me in total. Um, and then I hit my first lapse in bookings, not, not from Chinese New Year, that one was on my radar, but just that time of year in June where teachers in America are getting out of school, so they have more availability to teach, but the children in China are not yet out of school, so they don't have more availability to take classes. Mm -hmm. And that kind of shook me up at that point because as I had seen that this really was viable, I started setting financial goals for myself and I wasn't able to make that goal. So I looked around for some other options to, um, to kind of fill the gaps. And for a while, I, for about six months, I juggled three companies. And in the end, I just decided for myself, that was too much. Mm -hmm. It was too much to keep track of. It was too much to prepare for. And I found that just with VIP Kid and with GoGo -Go Kid, I can usually have a pretty good balance of seeing my regular students in both companies. And I don't feel like I'm relying too heavily on one or too heavily on the other. Um, I have done also some teaching on Palfish, not with their children's curriculum, but just with their free talk sessions. And those have been really really interesting because sometimes you get an adult maybe they want to talk about international politics um, I've gotten a child on there who was very loquacious and I thought his parents I, I just thought he was such a chatterbox and his parents must be so exhausted from trying to keep up with him they're like just talk to this lady from America <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> paying for conversation <laughs> right yeah, yeah. Um, so that brings me to what teaching, or actually before we get to that, you said that you were setting financial goals for yourself. Has online teaching helped you reach any personal goals? Well, um, I would say yes. I would say yes. From During that year of many things, um, we definitely ran into expenses that we didn't anticipate because most of those things we didn't um, anticipate happening. So financially, it's been helpful. Um, it was, it's been very fulfilling. I wouldn't say this was a goal. I had kind of just thought I was not going to be able to, um, to go back to teaching for years just because of the nature of how our lifestyle had turned out. And so it was wonderful to be able to do that. And then as I realized, as I said earlier, I realized that this really is a thing and this is something that you can work with. Um, I remember my first big goal I set myself was to see if I could teach a hundred classes a month. Could I, could I, and that I, I was actually surprised at how quickly I reached and sustained that goal. And um, I, on a regular basis, do 150 classes a month or more. Good for you. Yeah. That's great. And how long have you been teaching? About October, uh, 17 months. I started in November of 2017. Right. Yeah. Wonderful. Do you have a teaching accomplishment or um, something that you're most proud of? I think the thing 
I, and I would say I'm proud of it, but I was also, it's really humbling at this point is to look at the parents who I know I have taught their child for, for a year or for more than a year. Mm -hmm. And they keep coming back to me. And I know, I don't know how many teachers there are at GoGo -Go Kid, but what, 60,000 teachers at VIP Kid, and they still come back to me. Yes. So it, it's, I'm, proud but I, I'm I'm kind of humbled and it makes me feel so responsible yes you know um and I even had I guess I really got to think about it within the last month because one of these parents actually talked about in feedback where other parents could see not feedback directly to me but in my profile about how it's been over a year and how pleased they were and this they specifically tied progress that their child had made to working with me. Oh, congratulations. I know, it's wow. Yeah. Um, so with your regular students, or maybe maybe not with regulars, do you have any like um, favorite in-class moment or anecdotes about, about a student? I think um, one thing, it, I can't say it's necessarily one student, but um, I mentioned our children. We have three boys. We have three boys. Two of them are teenagers. <laughs> One is a preteen. Um, they are all very active. As I mentioned, we study Taekwondo. And um, these boys, our boys can eat. They can eat <laughs> a lot. And I, it always makes me laugh whenever I have a lesson with a child who is a boy in China. <laughs> It is universal. Boys must be hungry all over the world. If I can't get a, a boy in China to talk about anything else, he will talk about what he ate or he will talk about what he likes to eat. Um, just this week, and this really made me laugh, the lesson wasn't even on food. The lesson was on the days of the week. And I asked, um, what do you eat on Monday? And I thought I'd get noodles or maybe pizza. But this boy began a litany of everything he eats on Monday, on Tuesday, and then he told me some things he eats on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And then he got to Thursday and he said, on Thursdays, I eat anything. Oh, it's a cheat day. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, so that every time that happens, it just makes me laugh because it's something that we deal with all day long with my children always being hungry. And it's just, I, I have so much empathy for the parents in China because it's clearly universal. Yes. yes. <laughs> I think I could talk for a long time about food I like to eat too. <laughs> yeah. um, do you have any words of advice or anything that you would like to share to teachers who are just starting out? Yes. Um, I think probably three things. Um, the first thing is to just be patient. I see teachers so often who fret because they're, I'm not sure where they get their expectations um, because I don't know where I got mine when I started. I, I hadn't, I didn't have anything like this in my experience, but they worry that they're not getting enough bookings or they're not getting them fast enough. And I would say to just be patient with yourself, be consistent in your offerings in terms of your schedule. Um, the second thing I would say is to, um, is to remember as much as we have in common, there are going to be places where there might be gaps in communication. And um, something I did, I sort of fell into, but it was very helpful when I started, is I would write my feedback and then I would translate it into Chinese and then I would take the Chinese to another translator and translate it back into English. And sometimes it wasn't even close to what I said. Okay. So I, I didn't, I, I don't do that on a regular basis now, but it taught me phrases to avoid or phrases that I could rely on to consistently right. convey my communication to the parents. And then the, um, the other thing that I would remind them is, is to, to just have a piece about it and to just 
be kind because they're kids. And some days I've sat through my share of tantruming four-year-olds in a, in an ESL class and they're frustrated and it's, and the parent is doing the best that they can because I've been the parent with the tantruming four-year-old, you know, so to, <laughs> I've been on the other side. So um, to just be patient and know this will pass and in a half an hour, you're going to be in another class. Yeah. And to just have a lot of empathy for the child and for the parent, especially when you go to, to write feedback. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, thank you for that. Did you have anything else to add? I, I thought maybe you were. <laughs> no. There, well, the only other thing is that I wanted to say is, is I wanted to thank you um, for giving me this chance. Um, I know, I'm sure that there's some, some random factor in choosing the VI Panda each month or each week. Um, but since I've been doing this now for over a year, I've been thinking back to all those communities that have really supported me. The people who share their, um, their feedback templates on Feedback Panda, the people in the Facebook groups who share all the files that they make for their 2D um, props that they create. And for a while now, I've been feeling like I really wanted to give back. And um, you know, I wasn't really sure where to start with that. I, I started a, a, a blog. It's new, but I just thought I'm going to share things, things that worked for me, things that, that I'm doing. Don't try to do what I'm doing now, a year later. Just start with what's comfortable for you. Um, so getting the email that, that you all had selected me, it meant a lot because I thought this is a chance where I can tell people that you can do this. You, you can do it. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of your experience and yeah, for just embracing this opportunity. Thank can you. you. Us, uh, the name of your blog where we can, where I can tell teachers to go to, to find all of this great advice. Oh, well, sure. My blog, it's called um, you can teach dot online. Okay, you can teach dot online and I'll add a link in the comments to help direct uh, some teachers your way. Great, thank you. Thank you so much, Sandra. It's been really wonderful to hear about your journey and all of your experiences. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much for being our VI Panda. <laughs> Thanks.